Okay, so I woke up this morning. Yesterday, my weight had already climbed two pounds, and today, boom, it went from 118.1 up to a 119.9 this morning. And I was 116.1 literally a week ago. What time of the month is it? Woo, it's cycle time. It's my favorite time of the month, said no one ever. So I wanna give you my best tips and tricks I have five of them that's going to help you stay on plan with your health and fitness. You're going to come off your cycle feeling lean as heck and you're going to just be like, wow, this wasn't so bad. So let me show you how. All right. If you're a female and you're watching this, you've probably asked this question to yourself. Can I lose weight on my period? When I see the scale fluctuate, what is happening on my time of the month? Am I actually gaining fat? Am I actually gaining weight? And then the question that usually follows it is, oh, what can I do about all of this bloat? Like right before your cycle, you were probably feeling it, right? Like you were crushing your workout plan, you were crushing your nutrition plan, you're feeling tight, your stomach's feeling flat, and then boom three pounds, five pounds, nine pounds up overnight, and you're like, what the heck is happening? I wanna throw in the towel. So today, I'm gonna answer that question. Can you still lose weight on your period? And what to do about that bloat? All right, so before we get started, don't forget, if you haven't already, be sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell right next to the subscribe button so you get notifications for upcoming episodes, and let me know in the comments, what other questions would you like answered? All right, so let's answer question number one. Can you lose weight when you are on your cycle, on your time of the month? <gasps> Absolutely you can. So if you are someone that has had a cycle for a while right now, you probably know about the time of the month that it's coming. You probably know how you're gonna feel leading into it. You probably know the symptoms you experience. And so knowing that, having that knowledge, it can help you better prepare during your cycle to still show up and still keep crushing your workout and crushing your nutrition plan. So when the cycle passes, you're gonna reap the benefits of still sticking to your plan and dropping body fat and losing weight. So what happens during your cycle when you see that weight fluctuate? It's literally just water weight. If you are following a nutrition plan that's designed to keep you at the same weight or designed to help you lose weight or burn body fat, then you want to just keep going with that nutrition plan. You don't want to change a thing. So many times we jump on that scale and we see that number spike on our cycle and we become reactive. We go into restrictive mode. We stop eating the plan that we were eating before we eat way less to think that that's gonna help get our weight down. We change our behaviors just because we were emotional from the number on the scale. So my biggest recommendation is look at that scale just as feedback to understand like, oh, same time of the month as it was last time. I'm up three to five pounds. That seems to be my norm. The very following week, because I'm still tracking my weight, it flushes right out back to normal. So you don't have to be reactive then. What you want to do, tip number one, is stay tight to your plan, all right? So if you're following macros, if you're following a nutrition plan, don't change a thing. Keep just plugging away. Make sure that you're sleeping. Make sure that you're staying hydrated. Make sure that you're moving best you can. You will reap the benefits of sticking tight to your plan and not reacting. You're gonna come out still dropping body fat and as soon as that water weight flushes, because that's all it is, that number on the scale, it's just your body's response to your hormones changing. It's a water weight response and so it will pass just like the cycle will, so don't be reactive. Stay tight to your plan. So that's tip number one of how to keep losing weight when you're on your cycle. Okay, tip number two, take pictures and measurements. If you are still letting that scale ruin your mood when you're on your cycle, then you need other forms of measurements. And I would say pictures are the best form of measurement. Yeah, you might see a little extra bloat on your lower abdomen. Like you might see it um, kind of sticking out more than it normally does. But a lot of times when we see that number go up on the scale, we immediately start to tell ourselves this story that we've gained weight. And all of a sudden, maybe you didn't see it there before, but you're like, oh my God, like my thighs look huge. My butt looks big. I see water, like I see fat on my arms. It's not the case. Like that's the power of the brain telling you that. And so I always use photos as a second form of measurement. So yeah, I'll still step on the scale. This morning I was 119.7. 
A week ago, I was like 116. So a four pound increase when I am absolutely smashing my macronutrients right now and I am eating for fat loss, there's no way that I gained four pounds in the course of a week. So then I go and I take a picture and I'm like, oh yeah, dang, okay, I'm still looking good. Like I still see my abs on my cycle. So that number on the scale means absolutely nothing when you have other forms of measurement. You can also take like a tape measure and do physical measurements and maybe track it every single week, like take your navel and then the smallest part of your waist in your hips. And then when you're on your cycle, take those again. And yeah, they might be a little bit more around where you hold your bloat, but then you're gonna have a better idea the following week when you retake it, that it was nothing but a response to hormones shifting. So second tip after making sure that you stay tight to your plan is take other forms of measurement. Number three, we all know it. We have cravings around our cycle. There's something about like eating higher fat and higher carb food or chocolate or chips or pizza or whatever you wanna have just makes you feel good because you already feel like crap from your cycle. And so rather than thinking it's the cravings that are making you gain weight, right? The fact that you're not losing it right now, why don't you, since you're already following a plan, work the cravings into your plan. And then that way you know, first, you're staying tight to your nutrition plan. Second, the cravings, they already have a place in your plan for you that's gonna make you feel good because we all know, like it feels a little bit better to have chocolate on your cycle. And then that way you're not overeating, you're not having more than what you want in your nutrition plan. You're just kind of reconfiguring what you eat during your cycle to make sure that your behaviors still align with your ultimate outcome of whatever that is. So for for example, for myself, I know what I like around my cycle. I know what my mood with food is around my cycle. So rather than stressing about like, oh, I shouldn't have that, I shouldn't have that, that's gonna make me fat, I just look at my day and I figure out in my big picture plan of my nutrition, how can I fit that in? So if I'm gonna decide to have chocolate, and I'm gonna decide to have cereal, and I'm gonna decide to have chips, I know those are predominantly carbs and fats. So all I have to do is plug those into my nutrition plan first thing in the day, and then I don't have to feel guilty about having that stuff around my cycle because it all just fits into a number. And if the number again is designed for fat loss, or for staying at the same weight, it doesn't matter what the food choice is. It's just making sure that you know yourself and your behaviors, and if you have cravings, just working them in rather than just stressing out about having them and think you're gonna gain some body fat. So number three, like fit your cravings in. You don't have to just try to stick them away from you. Add them in and enjoy them. Okay, so that brings me to what to do about the bloat for number four and number five. So. If you are experiencing bloating on your cycle, which most of us do, again, it's just because there is a shift of hormones. When you get your cycle, if you know much about it, progesterone had been raising in case you were pregnant, and then when your cycle comes, that means you were not pregnant, so your progesterone is now coming down. That is typically the hormone that makes us feel a little bit more bloated and why we retain water. But soon enough, it's gonna shift, and then estrogen's gonna start taking its place, and that's when we get that nice whoosh when the water weight comes away. And so, one thing you can do about the bloat is do not eat foods on your cycle that you already know you get a digestive or bloating response to. So if you're someone who doesn't handle dairy well anyway, I wouldn't go and eat a lot of dairy on your cycle because it's only gonna further exasperate the bloat. So be mindful of food choices that you know your body doesn't do well with. Like I know a lot of people with protein powders, some people don't do well with dairy ones like whey, so I wouldn't go and just eat a bunch of whey protein on your cycle because then you're only gonna feel more bloated. So first, know the foods that make you feel good and fill up on those. And you can always go and like look up a low inflammatory food list. That's a great way to structure your food during this time of the month to help with, it won't get rid of the bloat, but it'll help minimize it so it's not getting even worse than what it is. So I would find low fat foods, so low inflammatory foods, and then the other thing I would look at, and this is gonna sound crazy, but this is gonna help with the bloat, is actually having more processed <laughs> carbs, okay? So number like five, my number five tip is find faster digesting carbohydrates. And so ones that have more fiber or they're more, let's say, natural in their normal state, so like a single ingredient food, they are designed to digest 
slower, right? So they're gonna stay in us longer, they're gonna keep us fuller longer, they're gonna keep our blood sugar stable, okay? But because of that, because they take longer to digest, they sit in your stomach longer, making you maybe feel a little extra bloated. So I would say this is the time of the month where if you want more processed carbs, like so faster digesting carbs, add them in. So if you want chips or cereal or crackers or whatever it is, they're already closer so like when you look at like sugar content and it's like a high number, that means it's just closer to be being broken down to glucose, which is what happens in your body. That's how carbohydrates break down into glucose. And so processed carbs are just further broken down for us. And so you might find that you get hungrier quicker after having them because they digest and absorb a lot faster. However, because of that, doesn't sit in your stomach as long, so you don't feel as bloated. So this is the time to have your cravings and to fit them in because A, you want them, but B, it'll help with that bloating. And then last one that's obvious is drink more water. Like water flushes water. And so if you are experiencing any type of bloat, fatigue, you just feel like wah, drink water. Because what you're holding on to, what that number on the scale actually is, it's water weight and there's nothing you can do about it until you get to the next part of your cycle and that water weight whooshes. And so don't be reactive, don't stress out about that number, pay attention to it every month so you know how your body responds to your cycle and then you can go in with a plan. Plan out your food first thing in the day. Get your workouts in, drink water, build in your cravings, eat low inflammatory foods, and then just know that you're gonna reap the benefits of staying on plan and coming out of it feeling better than ever, and you're gonna still be dropping fat. So, you know what? The cycle, it is what it is. It's gonna come every month, so if you just expect and anticipate and be proactive around it rather than reactive, you're gonna come out feeling super lean. So that's exactly what I did today. Woke up 119.7, three and a half, almost four pounds up, and I was like, okay. So I took a picture, I went and planned my day in my fitness pal, I got my workout in, I just stay in the course, I'm doing nothing but what I normally would do, and then sure enough, in about probably five days, that weight's gonna go right back down, and I'll probably hit a new low, and I'll keep dropping body fat and keep feeling good. So yeah, that's the plan. You can lose weight, and you can help minimize the bloat. All right, so let me know if you guys enjoyed today's episode. Drop a comment below. Let me know what other questions you have, and I will see you on the next one.